Jehova Malak, Ola Molamat, Jehova Malak, Jami Rakis, Jehova Gadol, Makarian Tios, Jehova Erdonai, Jehova Elohim, Kurios Tios Penta Kreta, Kurios Tios Pistos, Elda et Jehova, El Emuna Jehova. Ibas Leon Kurios, Otios. O Panta Crater, Baslios, Baslion, Kai Kurios, Kurio. Yehova Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal. Yehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebura. El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos. Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion. Kurion ni Mahagion Panta Kreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Yehova Ishmal Ka Yehova Shamma Yel Nakum Yehova Yel Nakum Yapa Netzak Israel La Sheker Gava Gava Triambos Yehova Isus Christos Panta Kreta Gadol Gadol Geburra Zaan Logan Ogar Tautios Dulas Desmios and Despotes and Isus Christos Kurion 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 Hagion 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 Numa Pantacreta Gadol Gadol Geburra Mora Roshnasa Elohim, Elohim, Ile Ilahi, Shalut Malak Yehova, Isus Christos, Numa Hagion Pantacreta, Gadol, Gadol, Gebura, Derek Emunabakar, Mishvat Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh Elelion Elohim, is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkanu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk, breath by breath, in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique, indwelling, mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Being thankful to Lord God the Father through His Son who saved us, now revealing His thoughts, His mind, His word. Through the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost to understand our life and to be prepared to meet Him. Being well aware on this earth our names are being recorded in the heaven to rejoice greater in Christ, walking sin-free life, sick-free life, by being fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, controlling us every day. Before we could start the things which Christ, our Lord of God, has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past, thanking Lord God the Father in the privacy, saying to God the Father that we deserve nothing 
all glory unto Lord our God alone, since he has given us his word. Psalms 119 verse 105, when we read in verse 104, Every false way I hate, the only true way could be taught by the word of God. No matter in the present Christendom or in the world, the wisdom of this man or the traditions of this people who have been teaching to you, rather than teaching to you the commandments of the word of Lord God. Yet God the Father is being so faithful in granting us every day his prescribed portion for us, so that every day when we take the word of Lord God in our lives, we really learn the meaning of this life and we powerfully execute being thankful to God the Father for this grace, the unique calling wherewith he says, Truly as I live, in Numbers 14.21, the earth shall be filled with the glory of my Lord. In order to fulfill that, he has given for every believer in the church age of this dispensation which we are going through. To know the completed canon of scripture, in the pleromostatoscope of the mind of Christ and learn and apply and do them. That's what the people, they failed. Though God the Father gave them the statutes, the judgments, the instructions to use the word. What exactly he demanded from them he gave as a prescription demands called to be the chalk in the Hebrew. And he said them first to learn. If you learn, you will know them. When you know them, you can do them. When you fail to learn the fear of Lord God, you will fail entirely your life. As Saul's first sin recorded in First Samuel chapter 13, he couldn't wait for Samuel to come, but rather he rebelled against the commandments of Lord God and his kingdom was put away. This is the first breakdown. When you sin against Lord God, everything goes. That's what we learn from the life of Saul over there in 1 Kings 13. And later, when the commandment was given for him to fulfill, destroying the Amakalites of Deuteronomy chapter 25, the way how they were, not helped the people of Israelites while they were going through. So the very first thing, the very first mission as a king he gives him to go and destroy the Amakalites, but he fails again over there. The reason is first, he failed to learn, to know, to obey, and to execute exactly what are the commands and the demands of the word of Lord God. The same analogy applies and stands good today for us in our church age. The congregation is not able to learn, to get acquainted and to execute the things which Lord God the Holy Ghost alone can make you to become. The name of saint to be called for you as being delivered from this present evil world in order to fulfill the Thelema will of God the Father. Dear brethren, use the privacy of your priest to confess your sins through rebound. And let's learn what Christ our Lord of God has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past. To the praise of his matchless, marvelous glory, which man on this earth can never understand, if he ever fails to realize the life is in the word of God, in the mind of Christ, the voice of the Holy Ghost. The completed canon of scripture, what we follow as Protestants, the 66 books. And if you go back to exegete day by day, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, then we can truly understand how important it is for us to know that Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has given for us this opportunity on this earth to be in the flesh, to serve him in spirit and in biblical truth. As the psalmist prays in Psalms 43, Grant unto us graciously, Lord, your grace followed with the truth. 
In 2 Peter 3.18, Peter writes for us in his classical epistle, Grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. The same thing he prays in Psalms 43, Grant us graciously, Lord, thy grace and truth, so that we could be well qualified to make a meaningful life, not like the life of these animals who are going to die, or the men who are going to be like the wicked deliverance, as he prays in Psalms 59, the dogs which make noise in the streets, not that life, but to live a true life in Christ, to glorify him to the highest. So dear brethren, use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins. Let's come back and learn what Christ, our Lord of God, has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past to the praise of his glory in his matchless, marvelous, infinite grace. So sanctify yourselves to look the great pal and unique wonders of this great and unique word of my Lord. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again we come unto the grace of the Lord, being thankful for this privilege you have given to us to study through the word. So that Father, in this grace which you have bestowed upon us, not to be used in vain glory or vain thoughts of men, or the traditions of this people, but preaching nothing but your commandments of the word of Lord God. We pray as we study these things, the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, will enlighten and challenge us furthermore to stand firm in your calling and make the things that which are pleasing unto thee and nothing else than that on this earth. Father, if our lives are not pleasing unto thee on this earth, O Lord, remove our lives on this earth. We don't want to add a grave, a sculpture, a wax, or lie, or resist, Lord God, the Holy Ghost, through our lustful patterns of the old sin nature. But rather, Lord, being put to death the old sin nature, help us to live a life sick-free, sin-free. Since we live a life sin-free, no sickness unto us. So, Father, as we study the things which are given for us on today's date, being thankful for this privilege, we pray the mentoring minister of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten and to challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. In Proverbs chapter 2, to understand the righteousness of God, His judgment and His equity, which is every good path, He says, first wisdom should enter into your heart. And when wisdom is entering your heart, then knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. Without entrance of wisdom, there is no righteousness you can understand. There is no judgment you can think of. There is no equity that you can talk about. Neither there is anything which we can call every good path. In First Chronicles chapter 16, Beginning with verse number 8 and following, King David exemplifies, Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. The way the people today are trying to spend their time to make known, not the deeds of Lord God, but the sicknesses of their life. Today, just look how much of the time they love to discuss about the sicknesses they are facing through. But they are not able to look the spiritual sickness or sin which they are able to perform against my Lord. You are making known the deeds of your sickness among the people, but you are not able to give thanks unto the Lord God. For the word thanks in the Hebrew called to be as yada, meant to say to cast down or to make the things as a loud shout of a praise. That means not just the mental behavior of the people who love to shout, no. But the loud shout of the praise over here meant to say doing the things in decent order shining forth the energy of your hand like a scribe. 
so that you are able to get your every perception according to the word of Lord God. The believer's life on this earth wherewith it's an great invitation for everyone to have what we call over here as morning star unto the Lord. You know the classification of the believers tomorrow, though we have been given equal privilege and equal opportunity on this earth in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, with the standards of spiritual IQ being the same. There is no difference of IQ in the spiritual standards, it is the same. Yet, there will be in the heaven tomorrow classification of the believers. The believers, number one, who have carried cross every day. The believers, number two, from carrying cross every day, they have grown up like a scribe, like a ready scribe, like the way how we find the examples in the Bible, like Ezra or Isaiah or Jeremiah or Ezekiel, who became the word of Lord God by writing down the word of Lord God. So this is the second category where you will be finding. The third category of the people are called morning star believers. That's what Revelation chapter 2 records for us, verse 25 and following. The rod of authority to break down every strategy of Satan, everything that which is evil in this life to be broken out. So having given such kind of a rod of authority till the end of their life, to read this passage for you from the book of Revelation chapter 2, when he's writing this unique revolution for us to understand about what would be your fate, he compares that to the channel of this people over here called to be Titeria, or Titeria, which is called over here as a place where there is an order of affliction. In simple words, Thyteria meant to say, it is nothing but a smell of affliction. So the first category, daily you have to carry your cross. This is one standard of the believer. The second category, Matthew 13, 52, wherewith you have joined as disciples. Now we are growing up into grammatias, but by default in the church age, every believer has been born as a disciple unto Lord. He gave them the authority to become the sons of God. The Greek word sons over there is technon, what the rabbis would call the disciples with that word. So every believer who has been born in the church age has been born as a disciple. So your number one duty is to carry your cross. And cross represents your daily portion, which you need to take it. As the Israelites in the 40 years of the wilderness, they got the manna from heaven. They got the prescribed portion every day. So is our life wherewith we have to get every day our portion, every day. If you're not collecting that, you're not carrying your cross. So your life on this earth has not been qualified to escape your second death if you're not carrying your cross. You don't have any relationship with my Lord God the Father if you're not carrying your cross. If you're not representing the infinite love of God through that cross by making your life pure to hate sin. You know why Christians are weak, sick, and until to the point of death, they don't understand the meaning of partaking in the Lord's table to proclaim till he could come. His work on this earth suggests so they partake and they become weak, the sick, and they die. Because at one end, it's an infinite grace of love of God the Father upon us, so that whenever we do sin either by thought, word, or deed, when you confess your sins through rebound, because of 1 John 1, 7, we can have that fellowship with the Lord God. Since the reason is 1 John 1, 9, you confess and come back. He says, I will show to you my infinite love. At the same time, the other side of the cross, the other side of the cross, what he is dealing up with, he teaches to us that he hates the sin. So daily carrying your cross is nothing but purification process of your sins. 
in the grace of infinite love bestowed upon us, we sinful mankind never deserve it. You can't work out. You can't earn it. Christ our Lord our God, in simple terms, he has given us this cross to understand every believer at least should qualify for this category of life in the heaven but you're still not able to cross over your second death. The people of Revelation 21, 7 and 8. The category of Revelation again 21, verse 24. You are not able to cross over that quality of life in you wherewith you are still loving a lie and making a lie as Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 through 16 emphasizes the point. You are still making a lie and loving a lie for you and those who make this, it says they are not going to escape the second death. And what is lie? Anything contrary to the word of God. We can do nothing against the truth but only for the truth. If the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, Though you might have done great wonders, miracles, signs or this or that, he says, Workers of iniquity depart from me, I never knew you. You haven't done the will of God the Father, then that stands good. Rather than you may think I can cross over, I can knock the door and Lord God the Father can open the door for my work on this earth. No, dear brethren, you have failed first to carry your cross every day. You have failed to learn. You have failed to have a desire to learn. You have failed to know the way have you so today to the grace given to you the same thing will be reflected back for your life. The way what you sow, that you will reap. You are sowing indifference towards Bible doctrine. You are showing hatred towards Bible doctrine. You are loving that though your nearby people are your companions on this earth with wherewith you have been in privilege to be on this earth for your works or for your relationships, you know, the opposite, uh, the things pertaining to your, the remaining two categories. You know, we are three categories on this earth. The first category called towards God. The second towards your opposite sex. The third is called to be your friends and family. So the remaining two categories, you may be privileged to have all of these things. So, all of a sudden you will look, your beloved ones are dead. And people would find reasons. And they would say, it was a sudden heart attack. Some would say, the sugar levels were high, that he was more diabetic. Or some would say, he had a lot of stress. But no idiot will say, he has sinned against the Lord. Because they think they're having a ritual life is enough. They think they've done good works in the church by giving donations to the church, by doing this, by doing that. But never they think they have sinned against the Lord by not carrying their cross every day and nothing on this earth, <coughs> excuse me, nothing on this earth can make you to realize until and unless you carry your cross every day by your own free will of volition. In Leviticus chapter 22, you know why we are teaching this? Even when you are giving your woes or free will offering unto the Lord God, <coughs> he says, whatsoever you do, it has to be, first of all, as it says in verse number 20, 20 and following, you shall offer at your own will. That's the word which I want. The word will over here called to be the rats on approval, not by force. <coughs> Coming and carrying your cross every day, we don't want anyone by force. It's your own life. You want to have peace, prosperity, joy, and great rejoice in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Then, have your pure relationship with God. First of all, the wisdom from above, from above is pure. So have your purity relationship with God. 
if you want to think the grooves of what to call to be the word as fetishes of happinesses which you're building if you think the fetishes of happinesses if you have a lot of money you have a lot of influence you have a lot of this lot of that and you think you can have peace and prosperity on there then really you don't have the rats on approval of lord god that is not by your own free will you are carrying your cross to christ you just become like a nominal convincing professional christians where with you love to become weekly once to the church monthly once to the lord's table yearly once to the standards of the festivals what we christians celebrate on this earth so he says the first thing over here you shall offer at your own will the word for will is called rats on approval and what does it meant to say you crush off everything that which is contrary to the word of god and you come to give your whole soul mind and spirit so first in order to do so what you will do you will renovate the standards of your thinking by casting out every pressure of life that's very very simple so the word rats on approval is nothing but it is called you crush off everything which is against the word of god and you come to give freely not by the way the people would look not by the way the people would think if i don't give what they would think you know people will force now today to beg you to pay tithes no even your offerings what you're giving it has to be the free will so here he emphasizes further but whatsoever hath a blemish that shall you not offer for it shall not be acceptable for you you know these two verses should teach the summary of your life you have to come to give to god the father every day carrying your cross not by force the same thing with believing on christ it's not a issue of forcing someone to believe in christ if not people will brand you that these are converts and they will say these are the people who are making conversions no dear brother and gospel is what we have to give to them the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit operating through us in them will make them if it is clear to their conscience to believe in christ according to their own free will not by force not by favorisms of deeds we show favor for many people on this earth think you have shown some favor by running your charity homes but don't force them to become christians anyone it has to come by free will if you think you are making them to be forcing and they becoming to be believers you know what you're doing you are walking against their will and god the father doesn't like that they have to come by their own free will even if you are a believer and if you are not able to carry your cross every day give your time unto my christ and fulfill the deeds of the demands of the word of lord god he doesn't like you though you are a believer he wants it to be free will not by force not like a duty it has to be with a love because god the father searches your heart he knows what is the passing in your reins or kidneys in your most mind he knows what is happening in your heart what all your thinking your motivations behind that the same warning what david gives to his son in first chronicles teaching to him the lord god whom you are dealing with be aware dear son he knows even the imaginations and motivations behind your thoughts be careful with him don't ever just think he is a beggar he needs something for him to be put every day so he loves there and to, and, and and he's been waiting there to get that from you no 
<laughs> everything belongs unto him we have to give everything unto him not the time when it is possible not the things pertaining to be weekly ones or monthly ones but every day he emphasizes every day he created man in such a way of genesis 1 when we look so that he can have with him fellowship every day in the cool of the breeze when he's coming to emphasize the point over there in the realm of numa he is teaching to us or roak what is teaching to us every day he wants to renovate the standards of your thinking not and never weekly ones every day every day he wants to be with you moment by moment fellowship so he has given to us the indwelling mentoring ministry of lord god the holy ghost not by force but by your own free will and anything which is counted to be blemish you know what is the word blemish the word blemish over here we read called to be moom moom meant to say having that which is corrupted in your blood anything which is considered useless or without value you know even in the life of jeroboam what we are reading in second kings of first kings chapter 14 the son about whom he wanted to enquire to ahijah the man who appoint or anointed him to be the king over there about the 10 tribes there was found something worthy in the sight of lord god the thing what he was done was little bit worth in the sight of lord god so he says to the prophet ahijah he alone will come to the speculator of his fathers and in verse number 16 and 17 we read as she crossed the door post the child was dead and the people lamented for him but afterwards we look the things what the sin jeroboam has introduced it has made a great break failure and it went along to be in such a standard of life which is counted to be worthless even something that which could be good but here he claims blemish that is not even value you're just paying your rituals coming weekly ones to the church you just look do you think your offerings will be accepted before the lord do you think you're able to pay a bribe to the pastor so that he can pray on behalf of you but the traditions of men which have been introduced they are making to each and every brain on this earth particularly the christendom the pastor needs the money the flattering titles men need the money so they don't fear to come and learn the word of lord god malachi 27 through 9 is destroyed in our midst jeremiah 315 is not possible acts chapter 20 verses 28 to 32 to teach the entire counsel of lord god and to be pure from the blood which could be upon your own head it's not at all possible because ephesians 411 through 13 kind of pastors have not come for our pulpits yet if not they would train you up every day if not they would teach to you the counsel of lord god jeremiah 23:18 through 22 like people like priest as he claims in hosea 4:9 such is the congregation today because on the face it is the pastor talking but behind the pastor it is the committee that is controlling it is executing its mind and the pastors they are not the pastors but these are entertaining clowns and this man when they're standing in the pulpits it will be like the sin of Saul what he did in first samuel chapter 13 not waiting for samuel to come and as the way jeroboam introduced to them who were not even from the tribe of levites who were consecrated they thought they could be the priests a worthless people low cadre of people and when he introduced such men twice it records the bible when he introduced such men even in second in first kings chapter 13 the last two verses we find that when he introduced such categories such sections of men quite obviously sin will be more the same thing what we find over here for us in the book of judges chapter 17 about this a levite bethlehem bethlehem levite or the person who was half greek and followed by the other category of levite 
though it is a short chapter of 13 verses, it teaches to you, saying in verse number 3, and when he had restored, that is what first his son takes away 11,000, uh, 1100 uh, shekels of silver. And then he comes back, he says, we read from the beginning of the words. And there was a man of, uh, of Mount Ephraim whose name was Micah. So he said unto his mother, the 1100 shekels of silver that were taken from thee, about which you, you have cursed it and spakest of also in my ears. Behold, the silver is with me. I took it and his mother said, blessed be the Lord my son. And then she's taking about the word Jehovah. That's what the word Lord meant to say over here, the Tetragrammaton. And when he had restored the 1100 shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I had wholly dedicated the silver unto the Lord from my hand for my son. For what? She, she says now, to make a graven image and a molten image. Now, therefore, I will restore it unto thee. You know, she's using the word again over here, dedicated the silver unto the Lord from my hand, but for the work of graven image and molten image. And Christ our Lord of our God, he says in the Ten Commandments, no form of anything about him. Using the name of Jehovah today as well, people are practicing traditions rather than the commandments and the demands of the word of Lord God. That's very, very pathetic for us to know. It. The same thing over here, what we are looking Jeroboam introduced to such kind of a man that sin was being found. And that God the Father gives him, if there is anything good on your behalf. But what you are able to find today, he says, you are of no value. The sacrifice is what you are giving. The offerings what you are giving. It's of no value. It's absolutely blemish. And the word blemish over here, what we are reading in Leviticus chapter 22, it teaches in verse number 20, blemish is nothing but anything that which is considered useless or without value. And at the same time, it makes other things also valueless. So the blood in you has become absolutely corrupted. And you can analyze that to the standards of this present world where God the Father has given to us this grace to understand the anatomy of man. You know, the blood test, the pathologist test. So here you will find in very, very simple words the importance saying that if for a man his blood is corrupted, Sicknesses begin in him. You know, that's what the pathological test or the laboratory report would give. Tomorrow, if you want to test anything from you, first he's going to suck the blood. Three whales or four whales or five whales. If it is further needed, he's still going to look many more things in that. So, he teaches, blemish is nothing but, moom is nothing but, your blood is corrupted. And today, no believer on this earth is able to understand why his blood is corrupted. They want to go and cross-check with his blood. They want to take the blood samples. But they don't want to look and cross-check everyday sample. What Christ our Lord our God has given for us first to do First to learn, to know, to get acquainted. First Lamad, then Yada, get acquainted, and then Asa, execute. These are three words in Deuteronomy 5, 1, which we shall learn. And if you're not learning, if you're not Lamad, Lamad is Manthano plus Rudasco in the Greek. One Hebrew word is equivalent to Greek words. Manthano, day by day discipleship. Rudasco, what you come and learn from the pastor teachers in your church like the way how Paul was at the feet of Gamaliel to learn the word of God. But today people are not coming to learn the word of God. 
the way how this mother of Mika says that silver is dedicated to Lord. So you go and make your molten images and molten grooves. So today people are thinking they're worshipping Lord God, but they have made for themselves such molten images and molten grooves wherewith traditions have introduced such kind of a way of life. And this tradition is controlling the church rather than the commandments of the word of Lord God has been questioned by Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 15. And we learned that yesterday. Anything contrary to the word of Lord God will not prosper, dear brethren. Anything contrary. If it has not been found in the word of Lord God, just stop it. No doubt how good it may be, how sweet it may be, how better it may be for the people to practice. Just stop it. You will be saved. You will be recorded like Jeroboam's son. At least he found something good in the sight of God. And we believers are called to witness the truth. By refuting false dogmas, false practices, false traditions. You have sickness, you run to your doctor to check your blood, but you're not able to understand your spiritual blood has been rotten inside. You're not able to understand day by day you failed to carry your cross every day to Christ. Because you love to give that which is good, you may think, in the sight of God, but he says that's blemish because it is not by your own will. You have been forced by someone to come to church. You have been forced by someone to come and pay the tithes. Though tithes are not available in the church church to pay. You have been constantly bombarded as the way they go on to make conversions. Rather than giving in their free will. It's a free will. It's a free choice. It's a free decision. You have been forced. You know, that's how the people are walking today. You're not coming by your own free will. You're not having your own rights and approval towards the Lord. If it is not by your own free will to attend and learn the word of Lord God, if it is not by your own free will to carry your cross every day, if it is not by your own free will to take up the word of Lord God and to write, it will become a burden for you. And Lord and Savior Jesus Christ hates that burden from you. When you consider indifference towards my Lord. It's not the duty that you're going to do to the Lord. That's the reason why you survive for the Lord on this earth. And the professing Christians today who have entered to the core in our pulpits, never they're able to even look their life as disciple, carrying cross every day. Never in their life they're able to grow up as grammatias, as with every day they write the word of Lord God and learn great many good things from the Bible. And never they will become to get qualified as we're going to read that from the people of Titeria of Revelation chapter 2, wherewith he says, those who are faithful for me till to the end. And they have overcome, they have been faithful to the work of Lord God. I will give them my morning stars. They will have authority over the nations to rule. Because they witness the truth in the midst of these people who are perverse and crooked. They hold it for the word of Lord God in teaching the right word of Lord God to these people. But you men are not able to distinguish first what is false way so that you can hate and you can love what is right way or true way in the Lord. For that cause he says for us in Psalms 119 verse 105. Many of the Bible publishers might have put this according to the standards that God has given us his word and this word is what we love to do. But you know the real meaning of that word. He says over here in Psalm 119, in verse 105, Thy word, and the word word over here is called to be Daber. And this word Daber in the Hebrew meant to say matter or anything related for an agreement or a placement of something wherewith now we are going to create order in your life. Let go all corrupted thinking in your mind and create an order. 
making a pure life according to the standards of the word of Lord God. That's Daber. So your every perception out of your nine or ten holes of your body, including the umbilical cord hole, your body has been renovated in such a way, now it thinks nothing but the mind of Christ. That's the word. You know, as the angels they have in them, they haven't been like us, the flesh and the blood. They have in them the light. They have been made up with light. In Isaiah chapter 6 we read this. So they are having light in them. They don't have like the blood what we have, the flesh what we have. They are having nothing but the light. Light refers back to create order. So every believer on this earth, born in the flesh, being born again in the Holy Ghost, should make his body now to be filled with the mind of Christ, the voice of the Holy Spirit, the remata declaration of the pastor teacher from the 66 books, what we have for us in the Bible, that he has to get himself transformed, renovated. That's why we have been kept alive and nothing else than that on this earth for our business to be continued. Because apart from that, as we read, what can I pay back to God the Father for all the benefits he's been doing unto us? Psalms 116 verse 12. So what does he say now? He says, for all the benefits what Lord God the Father is going to pray for him, he says, I will give thanks unto Lord God and he says, I will take the cup of salvation, call upon the name of my Lord God, I will shalom my woes unto the Lord God in the presence of all his people, because he says in verse 15, as people will mistranslate these words, and they love to put this when, any, when anyone who has been dead in Christ, but the word precious in the sight of the Lord God is the death of his saints, precious meant to say very rare. Not like these people who are dying with sudden heart attack. Not like these people who have been in the realm of high diabetic or this reason or that reason and having in their mind for the sicknesses being drilled in their holes of ten holes of perceptions. Precious in the sense very rare, very rare, very rare. Because Christ of the Lord of our God laid down his life, he has the power to lay it down, he has the life, he has the power to take it back. The same thing he says in Isaiah 53 10. Through the people I will prolong the days of this man so that they could live long and execute the will of God the Father. But the problem with you all, you are not able to carry your cross. You don't know why you have to survive on this earth. If you're not able to carry your cross every day, you will not come to the second class of believers called to be the scribes, neither you will make up to the third class of believers called to be the morning star believers in the Lord. Because you are not knowing for the benefits which Christ our Lord our God has given you on this earth, what you shall render. The word benefit, what we read, is called over here, Thagmul. The word Thagmul, which is called to be benefit of act of grace in the Lord, he says that you have erected in your structure so that now your blood is not defiled with the things of this world, but your blood has been associated to become a disciple or to carry your cross every day and follow my Christ. Such is the benefit what Lord our God saved us. Such is the reason why he has designed man on this earth to reflect back in this body the great word of God, the thinking of the Lord's mind mind, the manifestation of the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. That's the very reason why we have been still kept alive. But you're making that benefit to die sin unto death. You don't deserve that even to be born on this earth. <laughs> it would be still illogical for you to talk. But he says, it is by the will of God the Father you have been born. You don't deserve that benefit, Thagmul of Lord God. Yet you have been born. What for? To become disciple and nothing else on this earth. At least to reach the first level in the classification of the believers, daily carrying cross. Because when you start to daily carry your cross every day, you're going to reach the second stage called to be the scribes in the Lord. But what we are finding today for us, 
you are forced to come to church. Don't worry, dear brethren, the way you prove your indifference towards Lord God, the same thing God the Father will pay you back. What you have sown. Therefore, he says in Matthew chapter 10, when he's going to come, if he confess his word before the people, he is going to confess you before his angels and before God the Father. Therefore, in John 14, 23, if my words abide in you, and the things pertaining to my teachings abide in you, then me and my Father will come and abide in you. <laughs> Your body is not just the temple of the living Lord God host. It's an abode for God the Father and God the Son as well. John 14, 23, provided you respect the words of Lord God and you love the words of Lord God to be greater than your life on this earth. But what are you rendering unto the benefits of my Lord? When you start to render the benefits, he says first you will take up. The word take up meant to say nasa, you will lift up. And what do you lift up? No matter what may be the pressure in your life, you are going to take the standard of the word of Lord God to be your life. The commandments of the word of Lord God to be your life. You will not take the things pertaining to traditional dogmas in your earth. The first thing you will nasa, you will lift up. As the dukes would say, lift up the standard. Rise up the standards when they go for wars. The same thing over here. You will lift up. You will lift up to live a life far away above than the people who are dying sin unto death. You will not walk nor sit in the way of sinner or the seat of scornful. But your delight will be all the time, you know, where is your delight? In the meditation of the word of Lord God. Such are the category of the people where God the Father wants to seek. You will not waste your time in wicked behavior. You will be in the realm of the people where you would love to meditate upon the word of Lord God. You know, as Ezekiel was told, the delight of his eyes was his wife. So many people will have many delight things in the grooves of fetishes of happiness on this life. At he says, the one who delights in the word of Lord God, these are the people who will rise up the standards. But this man, they're not loving the word of Lord God. Though it may seem to be a tough time, the grace of Lord God tests us as well, whether we preach or not to these people. And as the great compassion we get from the word of Ezekiel chapter 4 and 3, whether they hear of or bear, you have to preach the word of Lord God. The great lesson what we learn from First Samuel chapter 15. How long will you want to repent? Or how long will you want to cry or weep for Saul? I have rejected him. Go ahead, I have prepared for you someone who is going to fulfill all the complete desire of my heart. In that same sense, we come every day. Yesterday, one day is gone, we feel sad like Samuel. Like the way how Saul was been rejected. How many people yesterday they rejected the word of Lord God? How many people they rejected not to learn the word of Lord God? Though it was Lord's Day yesterday, called to be Sunday. And since they failed to teach the word of Lord God every day, people now they think we will worship on Sabbath on Saturday. And let go the true word of Lord God to their life in such a way that Sabbath is good and they go on to continue with Sabbath. <laughs> the Bible says every day you worship Lord God. Every day come to Christ. Every day learn the word of Lord God. The nominal convincing Christians having the resurrection order of my Christ, they come on Sunday. And some people still follow the Sabbath. They go on Saturday. If you have teach or have taught the word of Lord God every day, they would have not find difference whether it is Sunday or Sunday or Saturday. They would make up to the pulpit every day to learn the word of Lord God because that's the life. Deuteronomy 20, 32 verse 47. It's your life. It's not a vain thing. It's your life. You're counting it to be a vain thing, but if you don't know the word of Lord God, no life for you on this earth. 
You think you're living your life. <laughs> you're yet with the dead on this earth. You haven't raised your standards. The true standards of a believer, what he rises, he's going to take up his cross every day. No matter how busy he may be, he may be the prime minister of my country or he may be the president of other country. You are a true Christian in the Lord. Take up your cross every day. Then only you have risen your standards. Then only you are going to make up your life. To get qualified to know that you are above these dead people. For all the benefits which Christ our Lord our God has given unto us, what you're going to render? He says, first, strike up your standards. Demark or make a difference between the people who are true for the word of Lord God and the people who are fake for the word of Lord God. The people who love to serve my Lord God with their heart and range completely examined with the word of Lord God or the people who would love to serve Lord God with their lips and for the great appall of the people. Pleasing men. That's what they love to worship my Lord God today. Their hearts are being very, very far away. If not, they would look the commandments out of, out of the word of Lord God, but they don't look into the commandments of the word of Lord God. What they look? Traditions today. Weekly ones, who said to come to the church? Every day, Lord God planned right from Genesis. Even while he was on the cross, he goes to teach for us before that night. I was teaching, I was daily teaching in the pulpits, in the temple. Now you think I'm a thief, you came in the night. <laughs> Doesn't he teach for us every day? Those who carry their cross and follow my Christ, they are the true disciples of the word of Lord God. But the time passes on. Your negligence goes on. The hardness of your soul will go on. Your thinking does not get doesn't get corrected with the right word of Lord God. It gets corrupted. You lack your help from men and not from the word, and you die sin unto death. And never you will learn in your life why you have died. You just look, you think you are living. No, you are still among the dead. You haven't lifted up. What exactly are the demands of the word of Lord God? Because you haven't hated every false way. Though the word over there it teaches for us in Psalms 119, in verse 105, to tell that for all the benefits what Lord God has given unto us, He says the very first word, Thy word, Da bear. Arrangement or the placement of the things which have to be put in proper order. That demands first you rise up above the standards. As Christ our Lord of God says in Isaiah 55, My teachings are like the teachings of the heaven. Your thoughts are like the thoughts of the earth. And whatsoever I send from the, earth, from the heaven, it doesn't return back to me void. It does its work and come back to me. So, he says, the word is a lamp. The word lamp over here is called ne'er. And the word ne'er has a very peculiar meaning, dear brethren. In the pictographical representation, the first word it represents is the sperma. The second word represents your head. So, he says, that which has been seed beginning... The beginning of the seed. Rosh is your head. The beginning. The seed is what is going to germinate further plant that is going to become again fruitful. That's 30, 60, 100 fold. So he says, rains in the mountainous areas cause a flooding of the rivers. The isological background, what we're reading on this. The rivers swell, causing the water to flood. The land next to the river. This is the only water that the land will see and is necessary for crop production. Now after the flood season, he says, the land is plowed by the use of a plow attached to the yoke of the oxen. When the land is plowed by the use of the plowing attached to the yoke of the oxen, the surface of the soil is dry. But when the soil is turned up, it glistens in the sun. 
from the water remaining in the soil. So this water is necessary for the seed to begin germination. The floods of water is what the Bible doctrine is all about. Storing that Bible doctrine in you, taking the yoke of the burden of the Lord God with the plow, as he says, no man is fit for the kingdom of Lord God if he turns his hand from flowing. In Luke chapter 1, we read that. Or nine, Luke chapter 9, verse 62, we read that. Any man who puts his hand back from flowing, he says he's not worthy to the kingdom of God. That's the very simple logic. So now you have the floods of water stored and kept for you. And then the season is gone. So now what you take? You take your plow, where it is attached, it's attached to the yoke. And the season is gone in the sense of Ephesians 2. We look, the apostles and the prophets, they have done their work and now the church has been built on that. So you have the flood of waters for you through the Old and New Testament of the 66 books being recorded and kept for us. So now it's your duty to plow your land, to break up your fallow grounds, to take up your yoke of the oxen. And when that land which you're going to plow up, he says, when the soil is turned up, or when the plow breaks up the soil, it glistens up in the sun. And now, because of the water remaining in the soil, so this water is necessary for the seed to begin its germination. <laughs> but you're not taking your plow. That's what we find out here for us in this verse. Luke chapter 9. In verse number 62, it has to be for us. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. You know, this is a call of discipleship where he's asking them, he's examining them what sort of people he would be. So he says, the first thing, saying the point, and when his disciples James and John saw, they said, Lord, will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them, saying, you know not what manner of spirit you are of. That means the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Even the subjection of the spirits, he says, that is nothing. Rejoice, your names have been recorded in the heaven. So why you worry about idols? Because every idol has a demon behind that. So the food consecrated, he writes in First Corinthians for us to learn. Having great faith, if the person is not having that faith, he will fall off. So because of him, we don't eat that food. But since you are being strong in faith, even if he's also strong in faith, he knows that the things pertaining to idols are nothing. So you can eat that, he says. And that requires your great morning star of rank. The morning star refers from morning 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. where the people will spend their time in meditation. But today we don't find from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. because till late midnight people would love to spend their time in the smartphones and they wake up at early morning 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock when half of the day is lost. First of all, you are not carrying your cross every day. You are not becoming scribe. Far less we can think you will become a morning star believer to the Lord. So he says... The power given to you is so great, he says, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. So for the Son of Man is not come to destroy man's lives. The word lives over here, what he emphasizes, is called suke, soul. But to save them, and they went to another village, and came to pass as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will akaluto. With the great soul of my mind, with the hear of my mind, I will join unto you like a disciple. Hmm. Lord said and the man said unto him Lord I will follow you wheresoever you go the conditions or ups and downs of life as he said unto him foxes have holes and birds of the hair have nests but the son of man hath not where to lay his head that means people will follow for the sake of the food and he said unto another follow me now Christ our Lord of God is asking become my disciple the word follow meant to say akaluto, akaluto meant to say to join as a disciple, dear brother, note it down. 
because you people will never understand the translations in the Greek, which is so simple and clear for us to teach to you, because if you are not a disciple, you cannot follow my Lord. You may just write behind your cars or behind your vehicle saying that, follow me, follow me as Lord said. But he said in simple words, become a disciple, join as a disciple, grow up into grammatias. So, but he said, Lord, suffer me. He's giving a reason so that I will go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury the dead. The way the word meant to say necros who are going to be destitute of life, let them bury. But go and preach. The first thing for you, dia lagio, to carry the message, to go and make up the things pertaining to the assemblies of God and teach them the word of Lord God. That's what he says, dia lagio, the kingdom of God. And another said, Lord, I will follow thee. That means he will become a disciple. But let me first go bid farewell, where which are at home, uh, which which are at home at my house. So the bid farewell, nothing but to say, I will just set apart and I will say goodbye to them. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his plow hand, or putting his hand to the plow, looking back. Again, the word looking back meant to say over here that. He is blapo, he is able to discern, now he is able to look with his bodily eye. And where does he look? He is looking into the towards nature of past life. Again, the life wherewith he has been living for the details of this earth. So he says, he cannot be fit. The word for the word fit we call euthiotas, that means well placed, you followed by the word meant to say titemi to set in order. And what is the word titemi? To bend his knees before the Lord. And you are not able to understand the ministry of kneeling down in the presence of God the Father like Daniel. In Christ our Lord our God himself lent in his flesh. Philippians 2, 5 and 6 as compared with Isaiah 45 teaching to us. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. You are not able to understand even the ministry of the people of the book of Revolution or even in the book of Ezekiel. When the Spirit of Lord God cometh, he felleth upon his knees. Automatically that happens. So he says, fit. You titeme. He is not worthy. He cannot stand firm to me. So he says, he is not fit for the Basileon Theos, for the kingdom of God. So the word which has been given said lamp, ne'er, in the Hebrew of Psalms 119 verse 105, the floods of water already reserved and kept, you have to carry now your plow by carrying your yoke of oxen. You have to now till the soil because when the season of the flood is finished, when the soil has been plowed with that plow, it glistens up and that moisture is needed for the seed to germinate. But where is your plow today? Christ our Lord of our God calls you, follow me. You say, I want to bury my dead. I will bid farewell to the Lord. You know, you're giving reasons to my Lord. Every day you need to carry your cross and you have now today much of the time watching phonography in your smartphones. Much of the time looking upon the social status of these people. You know how many people they have watched the status? How many people they are following my tweets or this or that? You know all X, Y, Z, sherats of vanity. Men loving to praise men. Getting appalls from men. Not being impressing my Lord God. Not getting praise from my Lord God. But what men he has except nothing but breath in his nostrils followed by urine and excreta. You want him to praise you. And I love to put your time. You know there he said I will bid farewell to my family. But now you are not able to bid farewell to your own smartphone. So don't worry, dear brethren. When Lord our God calls you to follow me, you will say, I will bury my father. He says, let the dead bury the dead. You go and preach. The good news of Lord God, the salvation of my Lord God. Practically, people don't do that, isn't it? They love to spend with the body three days and then bury them. And then go the third day as if they go to the, uh, in the work of Mary Magdalena coming to my Christ. And they love to say, pour some 
the traditions of India, what we are talking about. Pour some oil on that. Or in the time of this, uh, the, the festival, one yearly once they get for the festival of all session day, what you call. So the man who was drinking, they go and take a bottle for him. If a man was smoking, they go and take a big cigarette pack. You know, this is what they practice. This is what they're trying to do. And it's an already practice in my country. So the word says, let the dead bury the dead. You go and do my work first. Because the word of Lord God is a lamp, nay air. When you fail to dig and take every day the word of Lord God as nay air, Never in your lifetime you will understand that the renovation of the standards of our thinking, Romans 12, 1, 2 and 3, is the health, is our life, is our authority to live on this earth. So, the secret of Jehovah, which lies with the people of the prophets, to keep us all the time in youth of vigor and valor, is that lamp called to be Ne'er when you dig and take every day the word of Lord God. So if you fail to look, the word of Lord God is a lamp plowing your soil, taking upon that oxen, the yoke being bound together. You will never be young again. Though the outward man perishes, inward man renews day by day. But never you will become the work of Lord God. You know why we ask you to plow? Why we ask you to come and take every day? Because of Job chapter 29, here we have some of the things to learn in our life. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said in verse 1, Oh, that I were as in the months past, when he was daily digging and taking the word of Lord God. And that's what we have been told, till you die, carry your cross every day. As in the days when God preserved me, Shamer, he gave his thought process in his blood according to thinking of the word of Lord God which flows in him. So he says, when God preserved me, when his candle, again the word candle over here is called to be Ne'er. Dear brethren, the Hebrew is what we have to learn and we have to teach in proper exegetical standards. At least try to get back in the interlinear scriptures. Because word by word in comparison with the standards of exegetical thoughts is what the word of Lord God has been given for us to teach. Not according to the thinking of the traditions of men which you are teaching today. Your shirots of oratory. So he says, when this ne'er, again, when I was taking that plow, when I was been taken into that oak of the oxen, where I have been come to touch the surface which was dry, but when the soil is turned up, it glistens. That is what, when you till the soil, it glistens up in the sun from the water remaining in the soil. And that water is necessary for the germination of your seed. And that germination of the seed is nothing but the word of Lord God, which gives you that vigor and valor to be greater than Moses. The way how he lived his 120 years of life on this earth. You cannot become weak, you cannot become sick, you cannot become in the realm of even. His eyesight was not dimmed, neither his body vigor was abated, because he spent his time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, and he came to dig and take the word of Lord God every day, breath by breath. Like Caleb, though he was 85, he had the vigor of 40 in him. So now Moses, though he is 120, he is even yet not even 60 years in the sight of Lord. He had such vigor. And people today, they think by the age of 40, such and such, stupid man. The age of 40 is what you're going to have, your vigor of life to marry. Till to the age of 112 years, you can germinate. And scientifically, this is what the people are proving. You're not talking about the Bible. But Abraham, he lived 145 years. After the dead womb of Sarah, when it has been regenerated, he got married to Keturah again. He had five more children. Scientifically, the people prove it is 112 years. But here we have a record, 145 years of life, what Abraham had. 
That's the seed. The seed is nothing but the word of God. That's by the faith what he walked in the sight of Lord. And yet these people don't believe. Because you don't plow every day your field, your great fallow grounds. Because your fallow grounds have been tampered with untempered mortar every day. And since it has been filled up with untempered mortar every day, you don't break up your fallow grounds. Far less you even think, what is that lamp? <laughs> so here Job, he says, when his candle shined, the word halal, meant to say, when I was very happy to be a disciple of the word of Lord God. You cannot have any happiness on this earth if you are not a disciple to the word of Lord God. True happiness comes, he says, when I am a disciple, great joy. So when that candle shines, what does it make? It makes you to become the disciple of the word of Lord God. So where it shines, it shines upon your head, Rosh, meant to say your thinking and your thought process. And then the light wherewith I walked. When the word of Lord God is shining, you will look, we will look some light. So in the Aleph energy, every day I have to know at the standards of my thinking, it is like a light which is necessary for order, so that as the box is being stored up, where they keep in order, so this light, I walked. Again, the word walked is called to be Yalak. Yalak meant to say, as a disciple grown up into Gramatias. Then he says, I walk through the darkness. Kosek, in each and every nick and corner of this life, you have Kosek. The word Kosek over here meant to say, the wall of fortification what they have built according to the thought process which is not scribal oriented which is not like daily carrying the cross which is not like daily writing the word of Lord God so he says Kosek darkness and then he says over here as I was in the days of my youth <laughs> and here the word days what we look meant to say every day in his blood what he's pumping he's pumping the time of the word of lord god as the word goes to say youth what is that youth it meant to say corrupt and what is that corrupt it's just the harvest time as the days of my youth so here corrupt what it's called to be teaches to us that this Job, right from his days of his youth. So what is the word youth? Korep. Korep meant to say, a wall of fortification what he has built, so that he can pierce through in his head and open up his mouth to talk nothing but the word of God. So the word youth over here refers back to the things pertaining to the way how he would be day by day renovated, though the outward man perishes outward. Like Moses, we have been given an illustration for us to have to pierce every sharp word of reproach. Because Satan gets the way how Christ our Lord of our God was in Luke chapter 4. Tempting him. In Luke chapter 4 verse 8, we look, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ saying to Satan, get behind thee. We shall offer up our divine service only to Yehovah Elohim and nothing else than that. So, to pierce through the taunt or the reproach because you have been now betrothed to God. So he says, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God, the word secret meant to say, no matter whatever may be the pressure in your life, if your thought perception process is in accord with the counsel of the word of Lord God called to be the sword. So when the secret is nothing but the counsel of the word of Lord God, which it is said to plant crops by setting up tents or structures, wherewith you have now the level piece of ground, that's the counsel, wherewith you are going to plant the crops or set up tents or structures. So he says, when the things pertaining to the counsel of Lord God was upon my tabernacle, the word God is called over here again, Yel, Yel meant to say the yoke carrying your burden like a disciple to the word of Lord God upon my tabernacle referring back to this flesh and that tabernacle over here what he calls is called as Ohel Ohel is what meant to say as a disciple I grow up in grace a great joy your tabernacle on this earth as we read that long back in Jeremiah chapter 10 
is going to extend your tabernacle on this earth. We read that when you are taking as a discipleship oriented, growing up into scribe, then you are having your tent on this earth. Till that time you don't have your tent. That's why you fall off before the time, untimely deaths. And don't understand why such deaths have occurred for you. But the word over here is very simple. Why your tents are not been there? Because you are not becoming a grammatious to the Lord, joined as disciples to my Christ. And at what we look. Christ, our Lord, our God, keeps you alive tomorrow. James 4.15 should be the theme of our life. He keeps us for Zio life. A life which is oriented for the purpose of fulfilling the Thelema will of God in action. But where are ending up your life? You haven't even had a tent for you established on this earth. You may be thinking my physical body, my own home, what I have constructed will be the tent. You are morons. When the secret of my Lord God, he says, was upon my tent. What is that secret? The counsel of my Lord God. So that every day I was like a youth. Every day, no matter whatever may be the people who love to pierce me through sharp words, I never cared because the word of Lord God standeth and abideth forever, though the heaven and the earth will pass away. Having a firm foundation upon the word of Lord God, your days will be like days of youth. He said in Exodus 15, 26 and 27, None of the sicknesses upon you, if you obey my commandments, if you learn them, if you, if you practice them, and if you get acquainted with them, he said, none of the sicknesses shall be upon you. But you think the days of you have become old. No, dear brethren. If Caleb could say, I have that vigor and valor at the age of 40, at the age of what I had 40, though I'm now 85, it stands good. Because they've established the tabernacles, dear brethren. They became the disciples. They grown up into grammatias. Because you don't understand the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit operating in you. It's not just to get out of the filth. Because he said, being born again in Christ of Colossians 3, you have been put to death for the details of life. It doesn't mean you still battle for the details of life, which is all the mannerism of mortifying the deeds of your flesh. No, dear brethren, we have to become new in Christ. We are new kinekatesus. The power given for us is something great. We still can't hold back to make up our life as thinking of men by neglecting to come and carry a cross every day. And since you fail to take up your plow every day and till the soil and make the seed to germinate, you don't have any hope of becoming youth again. As people would love to reverse back the time. And they would remember as I was in the youth, I was such a, having such a vigor and valor. Stupid morons. Every day, dig and take the word of Lord God, you will understand what is that vigor of a youth in you. Because Christ our Lord our God says in Lamentations 3.27 While you are in youth carry the yoke of the burden of the Lord God That doesn't mean to say the age limit Till you die you are a youth for Lord Till you die But you should come to dig and take every day the word of Lord God But these people don't understand them so what did he do when the secret was upon his tabernacle? When the Almighty was with me, when my children were about me, when I washed my steps with butter and the rock poured out rivers of oil, when I went, the word butter and the rivers of oil refers back to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. When I went out of the gate through the city, when I prepared my seat in the street, the young men saw me and hid themselves, the aged arose and stood up, the princes refrained talking and laid their hand on their mouth, the nobles held their peace and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth. When the ear heard me, then it blessed me, and when the eye saw me, it gave witness to me, because I delivered the poor that cried and the fatherless and them that had none to help. The blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. I was eyes to 
the blind, feet I was to the lame, I was a father to the poor, and the cause where which I knew not I searched out, and I break the jaws of the wicked, and pluck the spoil out of the teeth. Then I said, I shall die in my nest, and I shall multiply my days as the sand. My root was spread out by the waters of the dew, lay all night upon my branch. My glory was fresh in me, and my bow was renewed in my hand. Unto me men gave ear, and waited, and kept silence at my counsel. After my words they spake not again, and my speech dropped upon them, and they waited for me as for the rain, and they opened their mouth wide as a little rain. If I laughed on them, they believed it not, and the light of my countenance they cast not down. I chose out the way, and sat chief, and dwelt as a king in the army, as one that comforted the mourners. King in an army. That's what if you carry your cross every day, is a pleasure for you to the Lord. You will be counted to be a king in the army. But dear brethren, the sad part, what is happening today? Men are not able to carry the plow to be put upon their life. Men are not able to perform it. So, dear brethren, the great privilege given for us is the word of Lord God. So he says, your word is lamp. For what? For a gale, for every breath of my life. Your word is the lamp. Your word itself is the vigor and valor. Your word itself causes us to give thanks unto God the Father, make known his deeds among the nations. Your word itself, it has been given for us as our life. And if you don't understand this, it is his word which is our life. You will die in your sickness, dear brother, and take it for granted. So he says in verse 105 of Psalms 119, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Referring back to the feet is nothing but your thought process which you have erected in you, which has to be like a disciple to the Lord. So, to be on foot, walking through a foreign land in the sense of trampling. That's what the foot is all about. We are walking in the foreign land. This is not our permanent abode. Our abode is in the heaven. We have come over here as pilgrims. Our, we are in the pilgrimage process on this earth. So what we do, we are walking on a foreign land and we are just not walking. We are trampling Satan and its thoughts at our feet. So that's the word, Ragel. We have been kept alive over here to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, Galatians 5. If ever you walk... It has to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Since you walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, he writes in Galatians 5.25, you march in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. So that's the word ragel. How important it is for us to learn that we have been kept in the enemy territories. What for? In the sense of trampling down Satan in his own kingdom. By filling the earth with the glory of Lord God. Because he said, as I live. Numbers 14.21 The earth shall be filled with the glory of my Lord. Anything which the devil touches on this earth is not glory of Lord God. So what does it mean to say? You as believers, when you learn the word of Lord God, when you take up your plow every day and dig with the yoke of the burden of oxen upon your shoulders, carrying the burden of the Lord God while you are in youth, and that youth requires a tabernacle to be established. So make up your life to be as a disciple oriented. When you take it up, when you learn, when you grow up, when you dig and take, and the soil wherewith it glistens now in the sun rays has a great potential for the seed to germinate, then the glory of Lord God is reflecting in you, begin to reflect, or it has been accumulating in you. Because you talk nothing but the word of Lord God. You do nothing but the mind of Christ. You execute nothing but the voice of the Holy Spirit, which is not gibberishly jumping, talking and dancing in the tongues. But the word of Lord God, which is going to be taught for us in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, with the proper isagogical, categorical, exegetical thoughts in the realm of dispensations. And that's what we have been called today to rightly divide the word of truth, not wrongly. People are dividing wrongly the word of truth today. 
Therefore, they lost the sequence of daily preaching the word of Lord God. They lost the sequence of exegeting the passages every day. They lost the method of going word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, iota upon iota, and carer upon carer. Therefore, they're wrongly dividing the word of truth. They have lost exactly the demands of the word of Lord God, which has been given for us. And that they are so much happy in this church age, thinking that they could be found in the heaven. No, dear brethren, you are not even to the category of a disciple cross-carrying man. You would say, Lord, Lord, and he craves for you. When you cry saying that, Lord, Lord, we ate and drank in your presence. We heard your word in the streets. But the Lord says, workers of iniquity, depart from me, I never knew you. In return of Luke 6, 46 and 47, Lord says, Why you call me simply Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I ask you to do? That's what your life is all about today. So, dear brethren, the things in the enemy land, what you have been kept, to get the glory of Lord God through your life, you have to first take up your cross, make it like a plowing instrument, Put upon the yoke of your shoulder. Dig the soil. Come to learn the word of Lord God. That's what taking up the cross meant to say every day to my Christ. Dig it. Plow it. The seed should germinate there. And when that seed is germinating in you, that is the glory of Lord God shining in you. And that's when Numbers 14.41 will be fulfilled. 14.21 will be fulfilled, sorry. The earth shall be filled with the glory of my Lord. The rebellion nature of the Israelites. God the Father. The same thing he looks in again Exodus 32. And so looking that he says over here in Numbers 14. How many days more you will be with his people? Both the occasions... He says in Exodus 32, blot out my name if you don't forgive these people. The same thing over here, again a chance given to him. With you I'll, get, I'll make a great nation. What a great chance it would be for Moses. But he says, no Lord, your name. What the people would think. That you are not able to deliver them from this wilderness. You are going to perish these people. No. They would consider you to be Yakol, Yakol, blood. That are not capable. Says no Lord. Save these people. Then he says in Numbers 14.21. For sure as I live. The earth shall be filled with the glory of my Lord. If you fail to plow up and take your food every day. If you make up to. If you fail to make up the oxen upon your shoulders. To be digging and taking the word of Lord God every day. You're not the glory of God. You're not fulfilling the mission of my Lord God to fill on this earth with the glory of Lord God. So he says, unto my feet thy word is the very source of germination of the seed so that now I can walk in the enemy territory trampling down Satan under our feet. <laughs> That same thing what Christ of Lord of God did after his fasting of 40 days. Satan comes to tempt him. He says, I will give you all the glory. Just bow down to me. At Lord God says, get, the, get behind thee, Satan. And for the taunt of the, for the exclusive authority, what Satan talks about, we have now for us in the church age, every believer given the same authority of exclusive authority so that now we can go and make disciples of all the nations and get back the glory of the world to Christ, not in the realm of kingdoms, in the riches of this world, but making the souls to be saved in the word of Lord God's work. That's what you're going to get back, that glory. Christ our Lord of God knows very well in Luke chapter 4, when he says, get behind the Satan. He knows now that we the church will be the men to go and get the glory of God when we are becoming the mind of Christ. But you are sad part, you are not even able to take up your cross. How many Christians are really taking up their cross and following my Christ? Every day coming to learn from the Rimata declaration of the pastor teacher. That's what the sword of the spirit is, Ephesians 6.18. It's not Logai, it's Rima. Every day what the pastor teacher teaches to you, that's what you have to come and take. Are you taking it? 
That's your only offensive weapon. The glory of my Lord God is not being properly reflected through you. The same thing what a warning was given to Isaiah. Up until now I haven't been declaring Christ as it is. So he claims, Lord, I am a man of unclean lips because he has seen now when the name of my Christ has been mentioned over there in the heaven, the doorpost which has been firmly fixed by Lord God the Father in heaven, they tremble, they shake. But we here right now on this earth are mocking his name, ridiculing his name, rejecting his words and say with our lips we love him but your hearts are being very far away from the truth. And looking that he says, Lord, I am a man of unclean lips. Help me to teach nothing but thy glory. And being cleansed, he was saved. If not, he would have been put to death. And now he comes up with a mission. And he teaches to these people, wake up to know the truth. Plow your fallow grounds. The people who responded, they were saved. The people who did not. <laughs> Jeremiah time, they went along into the captivity. The great book of Lamentations being recorded. How the pitiful woman, he says in Lamentations 4.10, it's not the pitiful woman, the compassionate woman, the raccoon woman. They could boil and eat their own children. Because of Leviticus chapter 27, which he said, You walk against me, I'll walk seven times against you. Be careful with the Lord God whom you're dealing with. And yet, in the time of the drought, they couldn't understand. So a silent gap of 400 years, then Christ the Lord of God comes to save them. They cannot understand him as well. Because they never learned the fear of Lord God. Rather than learning the fear of Lord God, they have been taught the fear of men in the precepts and the traditions of men. And since they have been taught in such a way, they cannot reflect the life of Job as stated in 29. They can never become like the way have David states in First Chronicles chapter 16 verse 8 and following a great song of praise to my Lord. Never in their lifetime they can give an instruction like Moses. Though he said, Learn, get acquainted, practice the things what have you learned in life. So he says, In the enemy territory, to be filled with the glory of Lord God, your feet should trample down Satan. That's the word ragel. The word ragel over here, what we call, is called the renovation standards of your thinking, having in you an erected structure, the structure of the thinking of Christ, like a disciple oriented. And then he says, a light unto my path. Again, the Greek, again, the Hebrew word over here called to be ore, meant to say it is the light of lamp, the light of life, the light of prosperity, the light of instruction. So this light, what we read over here, we meant to say, given for you to put the things necessary for order. If there is no light, you cannot put the things in order. So the order of life, what he says, called to be ore, it is nothing but the things of your Aleph energy in the realm of becoming in the standards of renovating your head. So you have given that enough of Aleph energy. Every day you have that energy to carry your cross. You may listen to some of the testimonies of this man. Eleven years having diagnosed as cancer, yet he prays to God, give me one more day for what to preach thy word. He survives till dead. He should have been dead long back. So every day you have been given a love of energy, enough energy. Why? To renovate the standards of your thinking. That's the ore light. For what he says, my path. The word path over here is called to be nati'ib. And what is that path? Trodden with the feet. First he says, Lamp unto my feet, the reason for you have been given this feet, shorting up with the gospel of the word of Lord God in Ephesians 6, is to trod it down. So the word path is not meant to say here, Darak or Orak in the Hebrew, it is called to be Nati'ib. 
So Nataib is nothing but you have in you that vigor and valor as per the authority of the word of Lord God, your body walks on this earth. Wherever you go, you start to talk about it stands written. This is what the word of Lord God is. This is what we have been told. This is what we have to practice. This is what the word of Lord God is all about. So when you walk in such a way, that's called to be Nataib. Because now you're having the authority of the word of Lord God upon your body. And when the word of Lord God has surrounded in your body, has taken that, when wisdom has entered into your soul, and the knowledge is a presentable thing for you, then the sicknesses pump out of your life. They just erase out. They just, because of the pressure of the word of Lord God, they leave your body. They cannot be there like the demons which was been there in the parable of Luke. The seven more wicked demons which came. So when the word of Lord God has entered, when you're going to become a uh, wetland being filled with the word of Lord God. The demons live. The sicknesses go. The sin goes. But you're not able to recognize your sin first. But you're able to recognize your sickness first. Just talk to their mouths. They will tell. Diabetic from when? Oh, you have a history. So they say such and such. <laughs> but they don't know they are spiritual diabetic. They don't learn that their hearts are being absolutely rotten by spiritual sickness. They talk about the cholesterol, they talk about this, they talk about that. They talk about the hereditary, but they don't look to understand the sin of a father is for the father, the sin of a son is for the sin. Now individually what you sin that is going to be accounted for you. So wake up from that sin and do the will of God. But they don't come to learn the word of Lord God because their body is not having the authority. So the word over here, what we learn is not orak or derak. Orak or derak is the course of life and the path of life and the life of life, what we're going to live in the entire time from the day we are born till the day we die. But over here, the word nati ib meant to say, having in you the vigor and valor to such an extent that you have been given authority from the word of Lord God, that your body cannot be touched by any sickness. Satan cannot even touch you because you are living a life of sin free in your body, constantly walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and walking in such a manner, in such a way of life, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not, without the word of Lord God, you think nothing. You get every thought into captivity for my Christ. Such is the path he mentions, Nati'ib. And if his word is such a lamp <laughs> to our feet to trample down Satan under our feet, Romans 16.20. Though long back he writes in Psalms 119 verse 105, you are kept in the enemy territory to trample down every thoughts of Satan. To destroy the works of Satan and fulfill the great glorious glory of Lord God the Father on this earth. They failed, he says, because of the great march what they had in the time of lamentations. But now for you, he says in Romans 16, 20, you can trample down Satan under your feet. Renovate the standards of your thinking and walk. Put on Christ. <laughs> and that you have been trampled down by Satan upon you. Because your feet is not been able to look and erect in you the structure of a disciple-oriented life to my Lord. And that dear brethren, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ is so gracious for you to grant one more day. That's his grace. One side of the cross. The other side of the cross, he doesn't hate you, but he hates the sin in you. And you become your sinful way of life. He hates the standards of your life. He gives you enough of warning, warning discipline. He gives you intensified stage of discipline. Yet you don't change. You're going to die, sin unto death. No excuse for that. The great cry of my Lord on the cross, Eli, Eli, lama sabbatane. As the people surrounded by that cross, they said he's asking a help for Elijah. <laughs> Or is calling upon Elias to look into the matter. But the great cry of my Lord, even till date, every breath where the believers are not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the believers are not growing up to conform to the image of Christ, the believers are not renovating the standards of the thinking according to the word of Lord God. The believers, he emphasizes the point. 
you are still making my Lord to cry, Eli, Eli, lama sabbatane. He hasn't forsaken you, but you have forsaken the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You have forsaken the renovation of the standards of your thinking. You have forsaken the right and true way of life in the Lord. And that's why you have been abandoned. And that's why you're going to die sin unto death, but yet you're not able to wake up to look your spiritual sicknesses to be diagnosed in the viewpoint of the word of Lord God from the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. And what the word of Lord God teaches, what are you practicing? What the mind of my Christ executes and what are you preaching? And having little things as the word says, little live and live in the whole lamp. A moron is enough to lead the church. As Aaron led the church, asking from you the gold and silver, constructing a calf, and making it to celebrate the feast. Corruption to the core. Every nick and corner of the pulpits of the present Christendom. Corruption to the core. They are not coming with their free will to take up their cross and follow my Christ. They are not able to make up their life according to the demands. What the word of Lord God demands in their life. Just to please men, to make them happy, to make them comfortable. They're able to perform their life on this earth. But yet God the Father comes up with grace to teach us. Repent. Change your thinking. In order to change your thinking, first you have to delete what you learnt. The stumbling blocks which you have erected in your mind about Christianity. The morons who are still inculcating such Christianity in your thinking. Throw it out and learn the word, read the word, know the commandments of Lord God, not the traditions of this man, which are highly valued, high above than the word of God in your pulpits today. And we don't find enough spiritual minds to teach to you the truth. Everyone in the realm of the way of this Judges chapter 17, we read Micah's mother. Name is Jehovah. Name is the Tetragrammaton Lord. She says, go back and prepare with that money, molten images and molten groves. Such is the Christianity today. Because even the ministers, they are not faithful to wait upon Samuel. They want to have their own life of style like Saul and reject the word of Lord God. And they are ready Jeroboam's. We are going to introduce in your life the men with lowest cadre, baseless people, worthless people. And they think we run the church, it's enough, weekly ones, no matter what. Dear brethren, your life is absolutely rotten out. And the people don't understand that you're dying inside of you already by the sicknesses which is operating in you. And that sicknesses which is operating in you is your sin against my Lord. And you confess your sin as James 5 teaches to us. The fogginess of your sins will heal you. Not the anointments. Not the things pertaining to your rafa medicines. Have your confession of your sins. Join as disciple. Grow up into grammatias. Come from the rank of a daily disciple carrying cross to the rank of a daily scribal authority oriented. Daily, like a scribal authority oriented, grow up into the standards as, as you call, like a morning star unto the Lord. But you're not able to find to be as a morning star unto the Lord. Because you haven't taken the first step. That's what we're asking you all the time. First as a Eusebian believer in the Lord, then you'll grow up into Daulas, that is to be the bond slave of the Lord God. And from the bond slave of the Lord God, you're going to become Desmios, prisoners for Christ. But how much you are really becoming a prisoner for Christ? 
how much are really the bond slaves of Christ? How much are really taking up the standards of this great Yusabian way of life, godliness, what you call? To teach you in still, some, still further simple. First, the milk. Milk stage is called to be daily carrying the cross. Or Yusabian standard. Then the bread. Called to be the scribal standard. Or dulas. Called to be the bond slave standard. The third. Meat. Strong meat belongs to them that they are grown up to discern between right and evil. That standard is called to be the meat. And that standard is called for, for us to be the morning stars or prisoners. Thus me also to the Lord. But you're not even taken to drink milk. You haven't even taken the path of Yusuf beyond life. If you are taking the path of Yusuf beyond life, the fear of Lord God truly operating in you, then you will take up your cross every day to my Christ. You haven't taken that. <laughs> you expect to be sick free life. You will die in your sins, dear brethren. If you don't take up your cross every day, follow my Christ. As a pastor teacher, if you don't teach every day the word of Lord God, being entertained by flattering titles, you will die sin unto death. Be careful about that. Do your duty unto the Lord God. Pay him the woes which are depending upon him. Precious uses the word. Very rare is the death of his saints. It's very rare because you have to still pay his vast woes. He wants every believer to be greater than Moses because the one who has been born greater in the human of the Old Testament, he claims John the Baptist, but greater than that now who has been born least in his kingdom is far greater than John the Baptist. And if John the Baptist supersedes Moses, then how much more faithful you have to live your life for 120 years on this earth, fulfilling each and every law of Lord God the Father. And why will it not be counted precious to be in the sight of Lord God, the death of his saints? And these saints are fought a good fight. These saints, they have done the things pertaining to Lord God to the highest. You are not able to become a life like Job in Job chapter 29. Far less you can reflect now your life like Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, wherewith you have been given that potential, that caliber. Ephesians 4, 13 and following, to have the same thinking like the thinking of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The full measure start away with you need to grow up in the Lord. How can you trample down your enemy under your feet? Until and unless the word of Lord God, you come to dig and take every day the mind of Christ. Nothing further from the truth, nothing against the word of Lord God you can do on this earth. To have a life fulfilled, to make your life for the fulfillment of Numbers 14.21. As truly as I live, said the Lord God, there is no need for my Lord God to swear upon himself. There is no need for my Lord God to bear your grievous iniquities upon him. Jeremiah 10.19. Because of you being indifferent towards the word of Lord God, he says, I swear as I live. Jehovah name itself he exists. There is nothing needed for him to prove that the earth will be filled with the glory of my Lord God. And it is for us to fulfill it as we trample down Satan at every breath of this life. When we walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to fulfill our every facet of the cell of this body to be filled with the mind of Christ, the voice of the Holy Ghost. Then we can fulfill the earth with the glory of Lord God, referring back to your own individual life. And such men, many are called, few are chosen, will be in the list of this morning star. And they will spend their time to learn the greater glory, moving from glory to glory, the great true riches of this unsearchable riches, polypiclas wisdom of God. Dear brethren, think over these issues, and which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite grace. 
So with our head, board and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudible telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us so very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to go up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, where with you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teaches the greatest matter is to carry so thon lagan, herald the word in season out of sin, because the diamond from my witnesses where it have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in building Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and number two diamond from my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go dear brother and you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of his glory in his matchless marvelous infinite grace. Infinitely divine Holy Father how much thankful we are O Lord for giving this privilege to understand the word. We pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost to make up our lives to realize that your word itself is going to keep us vigor and valor till youth till we die so that we could know when your word or counsel is resting upon our tabernacles to make disciples of all the nations so father we pray the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy ghost to enlighten and challenge us by this message which you have given for us though we don't deserve it to realize and to understand how marvelous is the word for us so that we could tread down upon our under our feet the things pertaining to satan and the works of satan and make your word to be high above honored than our than our life because it is what your word you have honored above your name in christ much less pure gracious name we pray father may lord god the holy ghost and and challenge us by this message we are thankful for this privilege O lord in christ's name we ask sovereign lord amen